if I can free up an extra hour a day to do something different based on, you know, technology or, or, you know, that spare hour I have now is 10 times more valuable because of the tools I have access to, we still have the same problems. We still have to manage our priorities so that we're working on, you know, the things that are most important, you know, and we have to restructure our day in a way that helps us, you know, lead in a direction we want. Um, but it is exciting and inspiring to see, you know, what we can do now with, with the tools and technology we have access to, but we still have the same problems. You know, so on one hand, we've got, you know, AI or social media as an example, but it doesn't solve all of our problems. You still have to have good habits. You still have to, you know, work one step at a time. But I, I honestly do think though, that people that apply technology, it's it's not just, it's not because it's not a get rich quick thing, but it's a don't get left behind thing, uh, you know, to a certain extent too. Like you, lo- you look at social media, um, you know, realtors that aren't using social media today. Well, how long did it take social media to become mainstream? You know, and if you're just getting into it now, it's just like you should be. But I mean, you're definitely late to the table. Doesn't mean you can't be effective and efficient with it, but it's, you know, and and then and then what a lot of people also do is they overlook it. They overlook it or they 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 take it for granted or they say, well, that doesn't apply to me. But I mean, everybody has a unique approach, but I do think that there's certain certain things that I mean, you don't want to miss the boat. Well, Chris, let's go back to what you just said with, you know, you you'd gotten off by saying, you know, step one. So if we, if we, let's take the old with the new, right? The new is social media, the old days where things were done differently, but really they weren't. So how do we bring the old school fundamental principles into the new era of AI and social media and digital marketing? How do we blend them? And, and I know this is something you've done. So let's tell the audience a little bit about like, Step one, if we want to bring the old school fundamentals today with the new school social media AI, what is step one? Yeah, I, I I learned from Mike Ferry, who was one of the original sales trainers in real estate. And the basic sales is, you know, prospects equals appointments and appointments equals money. You know, it's like talk to people, go on appointments, follow through. That that's really as simple as it gets. And so with social media, it's so easy to get caught up in the newsfeed, especially with you know short form content like TikTok, Instagram reels, all this type of stuff. And it's like, on one hand, it's the most powerful tool that we've had access to, which is our ability to broadcast to the masses, you know, but on the same sense, it could easily just become a mind numbing you and you know, scrolling the newsfeed in circles. And so uh, you, you have to create good habits based around that. But ultimately, you still have to talk to people. You know, it's like people will accept 5,000, you know, friends on Facebook, but never talk to any of them on Facebook Messenger. It's like, well, you just sort of watch what they're up to based on whatever the algorithm, whatever the algorithm feeds you that day. And so you still have to be organized and conscious about keeping in touch with the people that you know well, identifying who those people are and having a system for keeping in touch with them. And and utilize social media as one method of contact, but I still I still think that it's not the only method of contact. You know, I was I joke about this and say, oh gee, you know, my my video only got five views. It's like, wait a minute, you know, do you do you spend twenty minutes on the phone with somebody and hang up and say, dang it, I was only talking to one person? No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just one method of contact. And same thing, if you you put a an Instagram reel out there and you only got fifty views or eighty views, it's like, what would happen if like you know, we're, you know, we're on this podcast right now, but let's just say you are on your computer. Same as now 70 people walked into your office right now. Would you be overwhelmed? Be yeah, like, oh would. my goodness, 70 people. So it's just like, we, we take for granted the, the tools that we have access to. And it's just like, what really matters is that one next person, same thing with one step at a time. Well, how do you sell a hundred houses a year? Or how do you, how do you make a million dollars a year? One person at a time, help one person at a time. And then if you get good at it and, and you start to leverage some of the tools so that you can, you know, maybe systematize what you do a little bit more then great, you know, but it still all starts with that one person or whoever's in front of you, um, you know, and if you apply that to social media, uh, I, th- I think that, you know, it, it can be very simple. So like uh, what you're doing on social media is, is, is uh, yeah, amazing. What I see that you're doing is, uh, at least, 
but you don't have to have you don't have to have a massive following in order to apply social media extremely effectively and that's what i that's what i tell my teammates so let's say you keep in basic sales fundamentals in real estate okay if you keep in touch with 300 people as an example then you should be able to get a 10% return from that group which is 30 transactions per year because everybody knows at least 50 people and people will buy or sell on average once every 7 years based to based on you know death in the family a divorce a growing family job transfer whatever the reason is and so if you just keep in touch with 300 people no matter what's happening in the market you're going to get that same result but now if you use social media as one method of contact you can cross check that group of people on facebook on instagram on linkedin you can have an, an uh you can have a custom email you know marketing strategy and a mass email marketing strategy as well as phone them once or twice a year, host an in-person client event once a year or twice a year, and just maybe text message them once a year. So you mix all that together, you're going to be front of mind. They're going to say, oh my goodness, I see Chris everywhere. And you don't have, like, if you have 300 people in your sphere of influence, you only have 500 followers on each platform. Do you really need any more than that? Depends on what your goals are, of course. But like, to me, that's very basic. And you're just layering in social media to that. Yeah, I want to comment on that. And, and I pulled up a an important saying that I want to open this up because I think in today's world and, you know, and I, yes, I have a lot of followers and subscribers, you know, over a million, you know, across the channels. But I think a lot of people think, oh, to be successful, I have to have lots of followers. And that is wrong. And people actually go out there and then they, they buy followers. And let me read you this. This is from a movie that all of you should have watched. And if you're too young and haven't seen this, please watch this. It's called Fight Club. Tyler Durden was one of the main characters in that, that movie. And it was played by Brad Pitt. And well, actually, depending on how you look at it, they're both one and the same. But he said this. We work jobs we hate to buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like. When you buy followers, you are literally spending money to get people that you don't need to impress the people you don't like. So, you know, you might be buying followers to get 100,000 followers on Instagram, let's just say. That's 100,000 people you don't need and 100,000 people that you don't like and that will more than likely never buy from you. But then let's just say you spend your time and energy to get 100, not 100,000, but 100 of the right people, people that you do like, people that do think the same as you, people that you can influence and learn from or have them learn from you. Those 100 people are worth more than a million followers. Now, I know some of you are like, well, you can't monetize 100 people and oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. Stop. What is your goal you're trying to do? You're trying to be a world famous influencer? Well, then get yourself a TV show. Then go do something stupid that lands you on the news tonight that gets you in front of millions of views. Like, stop thinking that you need a ton of people. I'll tell you, I know a couple coaches, you know, I'm not really in the coaching space, but I know some coaches. And I, I looked at this one that makes tons of money, millions of dollars a year. And I looked at their social media, just their Instagram. And they had like 300 people. And, and I know this person. So I went to him and I said, like, I don't mean to pick on you. You know, you're not old, but you have 300 people on Instagram. Like, do you not put any time into it? It looks like you're posting all the time. He said, no. He said, you know, I know all those 300 people. I've done business with most of them. And therefore, why do I need more? If I, if I don't need more people, why would I strive to have more people? More people create more stress in my life. More people take more time from my family and from me. I don't want more people. I want the right people. And that landed for me because, you know, I might have millions of followers, but like literally like it's a fraction of a fraction of a percent that I actually end up doing business with, which yes, is a lot of people, but it's taken me the better part of a decade to get there. People want to do that in a year. They want to open an account, a TikTok account. Oh, I want a million followers at the end of this month. That's not the goal. The goal is to solve people's problems. And when you solve people's problems, you get paid to do that in one way or the other. And if you just start focusing on that, stop focusing on the glory of impressing people you don't like and you don't need, Tyler Durden, then you'll be a lot more successful. You'll be a lot more happy. And you won't be always chasing this false reality that you're creating in your mind because that's all it is it's just a made-up fantasy world 
I think and, people and I think, have lost reality of what their dreams and goals really are. And they've allowed other people's dreams and goals to become theirs because they spend too much time living behind a screen and watching this fantasy world that really isn't even real on the other side. But but you know what is too is people use that as an excuse not to follow through with an activity. So because I don't have 200,000 followers and I likely never will, it's not worth it for me. And I'm not one of those people. It's like, no, wait a minute. I hear that all the time. See what I'm saying? Like back to the basics, you know, A plus B equals C. That's why I just, I'm a numbers guy. I'm an analytical thinker. I just, as soon as I have systems, like for example, I don't care what the ratio is, as long as there is a ratio. And then I know I can follow through and get X, Y, Z results. And then I can base my schedule around that. And then I can improve upon that over time. It's like, it doesn't, oh, but I don't get every listing appointment I go on. It's like, well, I don't, every prospect I talk to doesn't turn into a sale. It's like, well, wait a minute. What is the ratio and how can I improve upon it? It's like simple, basic. 